This is that 76 Marshall Super Lead. It's been restored to being a Super Lead. It had been very poorly converted to the 2203 Cascade Gain circuit. And as you saw in previous videos, and I guess I'll put a little flashback here, it had been butchered. So all that yuck is gone. And we're pretty much left with the original chassis power transformer and output transformer, and uh, possibly the original IEC cable. Everything else in this app, and the tube sockets, except for the V1 has been changed. Everything else is new. Um, see the ground grounding video from yesterday on a lot of the changes here. I'll show in detail the new POTS wiring and the shielded grounds and stuff and some grid considerations. I'll do that later. Uh, I'm, I have not installed the master volume yet, and the tubes for this amp have not arrived yet. I ordered some really nice ones. They're on their way. Uh, before I go any farther, though, I wanted to check the voltages where we're at. So it's powered on, but in standby. Um, and at this point, there is no DC present in the amp because uh, the standby is done by interrupting the HT secondaries going to the uh, uh, rectifier. So I've got a voltage limiter. I'm going to measure DC right here at the positive output of the uh, rectifier bridge. Now I want to take out standby. It's going from 0 0.008 volts It caps charging up 465 467. They're still climbing. 468.5, still climbing. Takes a while for it to stabilize. With the current limiter, it's stabilizing about 470. I'm going to briefly turn off the current limiter and see what the voltage goes to. We've got 120 coming from the mains. We're at 470 right now. I want to make sure I don't exceed 500 volts unloaded because uh, the caps in the uh, phase inverter and preamp can only handle 500 uh, uh, volts. The caps in the uh, reservoir and screen nodes can handle 1,000 volts. Okay, it's not, it's not jumping a huge amount with the current limiter off. That's good. 470. Four, just about. The unloaded B plus is about 474. And that's pretty much in line with what I expected for a uh, mid 70s Marshall 100 watt. Check the B plus here, right here, 470. Four seventy. Four thirty two. Four thirty. 30. Everything's looking good so far. Yeah. This basically just tells me if I missed anything uh, in the uh, B plus connections. I'm going to check the bias next and then I'll be checking the uh, heater uh, connections. At the bias right now with no current limiter and 120 volts mains coming out of the wall, the raw bias is negative 52, negative 51.8. That's with this trim pot all the way minimum. Let me find my little screwdriver, which was right here before I started this video. Here it is. And I'm gonna turn that about halfway. When, before I put tubes in, I like this to have about negative 40. And uh, I have the uh, bias limiting resistor here uh, off the, off the uh, bias tap at a 22k which is one of the possible vintage voltages so right there that puts us at 47 volts because this thing may need to be in the mid 30s to mid 40s as, as, as the range of negative voltage that i want so with this dimed i'm getting to 42 volts and uh, that voltage will change a little bit once there's a 
a load off the secondary from everything, but not by too much. So that tells me that 22K here is probably going to need to be increased. The other vintage value there is a 27. Um, I will probably tack solder some resistors in until I get the bias range that I want. I want the minimum on this to put the output tubes about 30% and the maximum about 80%. Gives me a wide sweet spot. Right now, it's all too cold. And I thought that might be the case, but one never knows until one tries these things. So. I could also decrease this 47K, but first I'm going to increase the limiting resistor. All right, let me check the uh, heater voltage. Unloaded, it is. Not wanting to measure. 6.5. That's pretty damn good. Unloaded. That might be a, might be a little bit on the low side once the tubes are in their drawing current. Um, here, you see my pointer. Here, I have two 100 ohm half watt resistors from each side of the heater supply to ground at the cathode of this output tube. That gives a better heater balance circuit than using the physical center tap and the physical center tap on the heater supply the, the filament secondary on this transformer had been cut short by a previous guy and spliced poorly so between the splice that this is better and this also acts as a fusible connection in case there was a, a, a catastrophe catastrophic short and that way it's not going to zap the power transformer through that physical center tap that center tap is actually um, tucked away and heat shrinked and bundled up with all this stuff over here. It is not in use. This will be better. So I'm going to wait until I have all the tubes in place to uh, adjust the bias, but I know that that 22K is going to need to be increased maybe to as much as 33K. We will find out. But this is a promising place to be.